When we think of Linux and examples of distributions, we commonly think of things like Ubuntu, Arch, by the way, Mint, PopOS, Debian, maybe even some of the server variants like Ubuntu Server. But when we are looking at the consumer space, the use of these systems absolutely pales in comparison to something like Android. And not only Android, in certain regions, Chrome OS basically has a complete stranglehold on education. And while these might not be traditionally thought of as Linux or as Linux distributions, they are without a doubt running a Linux kernel, albeit heavily modified for their specific use case. But can you still really call Chrome OS and Android Linux? Well, to answer that question, we first need to answer, what is a Linux distribution? So let's break down what a Linux distro commonly has and get rid of everything we don't need. Does a Linux distro need a GUI? So distros like Ubuntu, PopOS, Fedora all ship some variant of GNOME. Other distros ship things like KDE, XFCE, Cinnamon, maybe even Unity. But there's other distros like Arch Linux, Gentoo, and a bunch of others that don't ship a GUI. And all of these are well within the scope of a Linux distribution, so clearly the GUI doesn't matter. But if it does have a GUI, does the choice of GUI actually matter? Well, if it runs on a Linux distro, then it's clearly some form of Linux software. I can't see how that has any relevance. Does it need to run on a traditional computing system? So something we would generally consider a computer. So a server, a desktop, or a laptop computer. Well, this is the way that Linux is mostly going to be used, especially in the case of using something as a daily driving system. But there's things like Mobile Manjaro, and I think most of us would agree that Mobile Manjaro is Manjaro, and if Manjaro is Linux, therefore Mobile Manjaro is also Linux. So a Linux distribution running on a phone is still a Linux distribution. Does it need a package manager? Now, basically everybody on Linux agrees that package managers are a great idea. They are really convenient. Whether you use them from the terminal or from a GUI, they make the process of installing applications and managing dependencies considerably easier. And basically every distro out there is going to have a package manager. But what if you do something like go through the Linux from scratch process? While the result in the end may not be good, it's still Linux on your system. And Linux from scratch does not get you to install a package manager. I think that's still Linux though, so the package manager doesn't matter. Does a distro need GNU tools? Well, GNU is basically the standard we use on Linux for getting those Unix-like utilities. But there's also distros like Alpine Linux. These don't use GNU and instead use something like BusyBox. I think Alpine Linux is still very much Linux. So what about the init system? Well, nowadays, the vast majority of distros are using systemd. But before systemd was a thing, we were using things like sysv init. And I said most distributions. There are things like Devilin, for example, that will use things like OpenRC and a bunch of other things like that. So clearly the init system doesn't matter, but some form of init is obviously going to be needed. So it seems pretty clear to me that none of that extra stuff fundamentally matters. So ultimately it goes back down to the name itself, a Linux distribution, a distribution of Linux. What is Linux? Linux is the kernel. So a Linux distribution is a distribution of the Linux kernel. But whose Linux kernel? Which Linux kernel? This might sound like a really dumb question. Obviously, there's only one Linux kernel, the kernel made by Linus Torvald and the rest of the kernel team. But many of the distributions that we commonly think of as a Linux distro 
don't ship a vanilla Linux kernel. Things like Ubuntu, for example, they will have a version number that looks something like this. This is not a typical Linux version, and the reason why it's not is because they're going to be applying some patches to remove and add different things to the kernel, whether that's going to be having better security, making it quicker, having some gaming improvements, maybe some better driver support or adding driver support that just isn't natively in the kernel. And this isn't just a thing that Ubuntu does. Arch Linux does this, Pop! OS does this, Fedora does this. Pretty much every distribution out there ships with patches applied to the kernel. And different distros do different amounts of this. Fedora, for example, closely follows the upstream kernel release. But you might have a gaming-focused distro like SteamOS, which applies a lot of different changes for different pieces of hardware they want to be supporting. But what about distros that ship a Linux kernel that's sort of like a soft fork? It is a project that is still the Linux kernel, but explicitly has a different name, like the clear Linux kernel, the CK kernel, Lickerix or Zen, TKG, Zen mod, or what about one of the really popular kernels in this regard, the only kernel endorsed by the FSF? the Linux Libre kernel, which takes the mainline Linux kernel and then strips out all of the proprietary blobs, basically demolishing hardware support, but still shipping at its core a version of the Linux kernel. And this is shipped by distributions like Parabola, TrySquill, PureOS, and a couple of others. And these are still very clearly Linux. So back to Chrome OS and Android then. Are these really Linux? Well, clearly they both ship a GUI. It's a proprietary and locked down GUI, but it's still a GUI nonetheless. And as we established, the GUI doesn't really matter. What do these systems run on? Well, Chrome OS you're typically going to be using on a laptop and Android on a smartphone device. But there have been attempts to get Android onto desktop systems and onto laptops, but it's never really been a major endeavor. Usually Android is used on a smartphone, but that doesn't really matter. Android doesn't have a built-in package manager unless you want to consider the way that you install application bundles to be package management, but I think that's sort of going a little bit too far with the example. On the Chrome OS side though, it actually does have a package manager. It's not the way you're typically intended to install things, but because Chrome OS is a fork of Gen 2, you do actually have access to a merge, in case you didn't know that. But ultimately, none of that stuff really matters. The important part is the Linux kernel. And as we established earlier, both Android and Chrome OS do ship a Linux kernel. In the case of Android, this is known as the Android common kernel. AOSP common kernels, also known as the Android common kernel or ACKs, are downstream of the kernel.org kernel. The kernel.org is the Linux kernel archive and include patches of interest to the Android community that haven't been merged into mainline or LTS kernels. These patches can include backports and cherry picks of upstream functionality needed for Android features, features ready for Android devices, but still under development upstream, for example, energy aware scheduler task place optimizations, or vendor OEM features that are useful for other ecosystem partners, for example, SD card FS. And as for Chrome OS, they say Chromium OS, Chromium OS being the project that Chrome OS is built from, uses the Linux kernel. Historically, we stayed on a 2.6.32 Ubuntu base for the first several releases, but have since then moved on to track the upstream mainline kernel directly, applying our changes for the features and stability we need on top of it. When it first started, it was literally just using the Ubuntu kernel. So in the only way that matters, distributing a Linux kernel, Android and Chrome OS seem to be a Linux distribution like any other distribution out there. Now, in the case of Chrome OS especially, it might be hyper-corporate, you might have no interest in running it, it might be full of proprietary software, and doesn't align with what you traditionally want from using Linux. 
and I have basically zero interest in actually running Chrome OS. But in the end, I think it's fair to say that it's still Linux and a Linux distribution. But in the same vein, I think it's also fair to say that it's not a Linux distribution. Google makes no reference to the fact that Android and Chrome OS are running Linux in the background. These are projects that are surpassed being a Linux project, a Linux distribution. Yes, at their core, they use Linux, but the fact that they're using Linux isn't really relevant to the project itself outside of the fact that the Linux kernel is a really good kernel. Take, for example, the PS4. At the core of your PS4, it is running a BSD variant, but Sony never makes any reference to using BSD on this system, because in the end, the product surpasses what makes up the core of the project. But maybe you disagree. Maybe I missed something and you think I'm completely wrong and Android and Chrome OS have no chance to be a Linux distro. Let me know in the comment section down below and I would love to hear why. And if you like the video, I'm gonna go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, send me pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody on Games. That's gonna be it for me and I'm out.